My name is not Jim Stein. I'm with the LA Fish Guy. Welcome back to the new, older, shorter, multi-part version of LA Fish Guys. Are you ready? back to another part of LA Fish Guys. Uh, it's time to move forward and start removing the rest of the lights and adding in the rest of the kessels. Next step is to get up there and yank a couple more lights out and add a couple more kessels. Lights up. Alright, step one, pull down light. To install the second set of four Kessel LED lights, the old ReefTech LED light enclosures need to come out. But before Scott can remove those old large units, he needs to sort out, redo, rewire, and reroute a number of intertwined cables and power cords. And all being done safely so that nothing falls through the large openings on the top of the tank. The new Kessel LED lights are much more compact than the previous and along with their greater control over color and intensity, the multiple number of lights can easily be clamped to Scott's existing aluminum light rack and allows him to be able to spread those lights further apart from each other. As mentioned in the previous part one, Scott's articulating mounts will allow him the ability to direct the light's output to exactly where he wants it to be. These mounts are secured by a simple screw and bracket mechanism that clamps around the existing aluminum light rack rails. So why is Scott making changes to his existing LED lighting system? Well, it's a combination of reasons ranging from wanting to have more control over the intensity as well as the color of the light. Additionally, these new Kessel LEDs include a proprietary means of including the ultraviolet spectrum of light which will benefit the corals more so the zooxanthellae algae contained within the corals. These Kessel LEDs have a narrower spread of light referred to as point source lighting. This smaller spread provides a more focused light source and as you can see a greater amount of glitter line throughout the entire aquarium. To get the final of four older ReefTech LED enclosures out of the way, Scott needs to snip a few cable ties, disconnect a power cord, and move some cables off to the side. And with the older units completely removed, the final two of a total of eight of the new Kessel LED lights can be affixed to the light rack. All right, so we got all eight lights fired up. Now I got a mess of wires to clean up and a bunch of aiming uh, and some adjustment through the software. But at this point, I think I need a break. So we're gonna lower the lights down a little bit, take a look from afar, see how it looks. I can tell already I'm gonna need to adjust, adjust the intensity up because it's not quite as bright as it was before. Um, I have to do that in conjunction with aiming so that I can ensure that I'm getting the best coverage possible from the lights, but so far, so good. Time to lower the lights. With Neptune Systems' new cloud-based control, Apex Fusion, 
You can control products from Ecotech Marine and their Radeon LED with an ease never been seen before. Right from the dashboard, you get a graphical user interface that allows you to adjust the time, the intensity, and the lighting mode of your Radeon LEDs. You can even use it on a mobile device and you can add clouds and lightning. Also, it controls the Vortec pumps. Right from the dashboard again, you get a graphical interface that's very familiar, allows you to change the intensity, the time, and even the mode that the Vortec pump is in. And if you want to compare that to another pump or even to the Radeon LED, that can be done with these as well. All of this is with the Apex, Apex Fusion, and the WXM module from Neptune Systems. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein, and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. Do you have an aquarium question? Are you looking for aquatic answers? Just key in wetwebmedia.com. Wet Web Media has information on freshwater, marine, brackish, and planted aquariums. Wet Web Media is staffed by the capable Wet Web Media crew. Check today's facts, ask questions, or search keywords. That's wetwebmedia.com. Now that Scott has all eight Kessel lights installed, it's time to reassemble some of the components that also piggyback on the aluminum light rack. One of those items is a pair of fans. That's right, fans. Desk or clamp mounted fans. These fans are aimed down to blow across the water's surface. This produces what is called evaporative cooling. It does increase the amount of replacement water that's needed and it's not as fast in its pull down as would be an aquarium chiller, but it's also considerably less expensive to operate. And now that the actual installation of the Kessel LED lights and other accessories has been completed, it's now time to start making adjustments via his laptop computer. That's right, through his laptop computer, Scott will access his Apex controller through Apex Fusion, which is a cloud-based server, which is allowing the user access directly to the controller. This will be his initial starting point, and he can begin to make adjustments from there. So, we're gonna take a quick power reading just to get an idea of where we're at. So the numbers look kind of low right now. And that's largely because I need to focus them. But the one thing about these lights is the blue spectrum does not read on the PAR meter. The last lights had a lot more white LEDs in them, so they read a little bit higher. Partly due to the significant surface agitation, which makes it difficult to get a consistent reading, and due to the unique spectral output of various color LEDs, which present a challenge when attempting to make accurate PAR measurements. With commercially available PAR meters, certain colors of LEDs tend to read high, while others tend to read low. There is a blue diffuser that improves the spectral response to more accurately measure all the wavelengths of light and has a minimal error due to the immersion effect. Ha! 
No. That's gonna be it for a little bit. I need to take a break before I start messing with wires and adjusting it. So this is gonna be the end of this part. Stay tuned for part three, where we'll keep moving forward and we should have everything buttoned up. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.